The Acolytes of Failure is having quite a delicious knock-on for the rest of the greater Star Wars universe, as you can see right here. The Star Wars The High Republic coming to an end after the Acolytes cancellation. So you're telling me, you're telling me that the brain trust over there at Lucasfilm was hinging the future of the already pathetically received High Republic series on the success of of the Acolyte on Leslie Headland's most important piece of art ever. That was a decision being made. The Martez sisters continuing story wasn't enough to continue to waste millions of dollars on. Hilarious. New rumor claims that Lucasfilm's publishing and media initiative, Star Wars The High Republic, is coming to an end. Oh no, there's literally dozens of people that will care about this and I guess maybe not at the end of it because they'll at least have complete collections because there was never ever a threat of any collector's merchandise running out because literally nobody was buying this stuff but why do you continue oh my god and that lightsaber has like a little lightsaber cross guard it's like it's so stupid absolutely stupid new rumor comes from scooper wdw pro uh, during uh his pro show live stream in between the rumor that you know Sydney Sweeney is going to be cast as Black Cat which would be very interesting i'll just leave that like that uh wdw pro stated according to our source the high republic is coming to an end oh shucks the people uh, that we are talking to are saying are saying to us uh, that it is looking like disney is ready to pull the plug on the high republic oh no and the acolyte being cancelled is just the beginning of that but it is also the catalyst of it yeah exactly because if that could succeed there could be more stories to tell during the time of the high republic because yeah that's a pretty chunky bit of time where a lot of things could be at play it's just your books didn't work to begin with you stuffed it full of a bunch of identity politics and then of course the acolyte what else do we have to say about this at this point in time, bro? It was a to complete and total disaster. Next, Pro stated, so basically for years, Disney has been building towards putting the High Republic on the small screen and then the big screen eventually. And they had all they had to do was roll out a young adult novels, which did not do very well. Uh, they were all on the New York Times bestseller list. I'm sure they were. By the way, that doesn't mean anything because you can basically pay your way on there. Yeah, exactly. So New York Times, uh, that's my opinion, and I'm keeping it to disagree if you like it's subjective yes but things did not go well for the high republic we've documented that over the years quite significantly barnes and noble for example was putting the high republic novels on the floor and they were actually putting the high republic novels or the high republic novels on the floor because that let them put timothy zahn books on the shelves oh yeah right the guy who actually wrote thrawn the guy who actually wrote the proper heir to the empire popular eu novels the ones that you decanonized and then later lamented kathleen kennedy that you had no source material in star wars idiot i guess uh, those would sell and so they had to have the high republic uh, that space contractually uh, but on the floor they went so disney built up and build up was leading to the acolyte and what happened well viewership was absolutely terrible yes confirmed uh so now with all of that having been or having been built up on the small screen adventures there's no reason to continue with this venture of doing more adventures with the high republic not when it's so utterly unsuccessful and has no merchandising power either because yeah last time we talked about the acolyte it was a ski rubbed from the online disney store no references could be searched no merchandise could be purchased and hell even the characters they were getting order 66 now here's the tricky part of it according to the source uh, and we are not going to uh, get an announcement that the high republic is being ended with is normal practice for disney well outside of letting it leak out the season two of the acolyte has been canceled disney uh yeah, that would be a black eye again. We're in rumor territory, but according to the source, we will see that it gets phased out over the next year or so. And basically, though the way this is going to play out is that the High Republic books and comics and whatever else they do uh, is going to be a clear the deck for those items that they've already paid for and budgeted, and they're in production and whatnot, and they're going to keep those going. But then that's about it. Uh, they're going to have to stop that. And again, the reason is because there's simply no future for this. Well, there wasn't it was dead on arrival it was a cool idea to try to fill in the gaps okay so what ended up leading up to the fall of the jedi okay what what was the story of the jedi leading up to the prequels 
interesting time period. And what did you end up doing with it? Absolutely nothing. Instead of making it a big old DEI identity politics fest. You did it to yourself, Lucasfilm, and you only have yourself to blame on this. I don't know, man. It's interesting, right? Because obviously High Republic just getting lost to time is all because of the Acolyte was just such a disaster. Every single aspect of this was a total failure. But perhaps this era of Star Wars could have lived another day if it wasn't so damned expensive, right? $630,000 per minute of screen time. Yeah, it was $180 million for eight 30-ish minute episodes. Like if you chop off the recaps and the credits, but in some of those episodes, you can't really chop off the credits because they had new and unique pop songs debuted at the end of it, which is just so antithetical to Star Wars. I don't even know where to begin on that. But even still, if you take the entire runtime with all the credits, all the recaps intact, $630,000 per minute of screen time. And all you got was record low viewership, which perhaps the skeleton crew will eclipse, but perhaps maybe not. Like dollar for dollar, I don't imagine that that's going to be a bigger bomb for Lucasfilm. Your people might care, or might not care about it. I don't even know when it comes out. I know it's supposed to be out by the end of the year, but is anybody going to cover it? Is anybody going to watch it? Absolutely not. But I think it also knows what it is, a lower stakes show. And why it doesn't have to be so bombastic and over the top. What we're also hearing from this rumor right now, there's no plans to remove the series from Disney Plus, but over the next year or so, if the High Republic's gonna get phased out, could we also see the Acolyte getting phased out? Oh, potentially. But this would have been much more difficult to do because, okay, cool. Look at the two faces, right? Like the two major faces coming out of the Acolyte. Everybody remembers, for better or for worse, old cringy Smilo Ren, Chimere, the Stranger, Annie Jacinto, and being all right. And then he had uh, Lee Jung Jae, Master Squid Game, Master Soul, giving it socks, and then eventually capitulating to the bland protagonist turned antagonist, you know, giving her permission to kill him at the end of the show. Just so pathetic. But those were the two high points of the series just those guys you know being generally competent actors but this could have been an even bigger disaster if you thought 180 million dollars getting flushed down the drain Li Zhang Jie's first English speaking performance being wasted on this crap written by Leslie Headland could have been even more catastrophic because they had eyed for the role of master soul Keanu Reeves they were going to have legitimately Matrix in Star Wars because if you recall and I also seen this pointed out and I wish I could give proper credit to the post that I seen it but somebody was pointing out isn't it hilarious you know with uh, Amanda Stenberg you know the the genius behind Osha and May Ayasanya took it upon herself after nobody was really talking about the blandness of her characters to uh, write and perform a diss track that made everybody laugh for a couple of days until the next episode came out and it was even more fun and cringe then said diss track there were memes about jody turner smith's uh, lesbian space bitch coven okay or even her cringy interviews when she's gone yes yes but nobody talked about arianne moss like, she was the most famous person and in the lead up to the show and to the lead up of the acolyte coming out all of the marketing was all centered around hey look at we got trinity in, and she's gonna be doing some matrix stuff it's gonna be great and make sure you don't blink because she's only alive for one scene but we're gonna do a couple of flashbacks and she's gonna end up killing all of the lesbian space which is spoilers i guess but nobody cares but you're telling me you know the best actor the best actor could have been replaced by somebody who hasn't been out of John Wick mode since the original one came out just about a decade ago. Ooh, this could have been both a far more expensive, far more expensive, but also even worse. Maybe there's a reason why Keanu went, thanks, but no thanks. He was reportedly almost starred in the Acolyte. Wow, still being considered for another Star Wars project. Keanu, don't, don't. Okay, like you got a good thing going with John Wick, even for as much as they've just become superhero films and less action films, but don't, don't do this. Don't hop on this. You already managed to survive the abomination that was a Matrix Resurrections, but you don't have to do this. Please stay far away from the mouse. New reports about Star Wars The Acolyte uh, have started to emerge following, yes, the show's cancellation, and one suggests that Keanu Reeves was nearly cast as one of the series' uh, leading roles. The Acolyte already has a star-studded cast, sure. Uh, from Carrie Ann Moss to Lee Jung Jae. Yes, Master Squid Game. But yeah, there was one star in this. And I guess X-23, right? Like Daphne Keene, but 
Anybody who has a name recognition, well, they just made themselves absent from any of the marketing after the show released because, yeah, all of that lead up to that one fight scene and then Carrie Ann Moss just kind of disappeared in the background. I think there was one interview of her saying, yeah, my kids wanted me to be a part of the star or be a part of Star Wars in some form or fashion. I did the role Then we didn't hear anything about it afterwards. It's like, yeah, OK, cool. She got to be a part of Star Wars. I guess that's a badge of honor or a box to check for or check for people that are out there at this point. It's kind of like how Christian Bale's kids wanted him to be in a Marvel movie. That's why he ended up wasting all of his time and talent in Thor Love and Thunder. It's just to appease his kids. It's like, is that what you can do if you achieve a certain level in Hollywood? This is what Star Wars has become, self-referential and glomming on to other people's star power. Unbelievable. Uh, while Zhang Zhe garnered plenty of praise for the Acolyte, his role as Master Soul was often, yeah, was often pointed to as a series highlight. Yep. Uh, this role was nearly played by someone else, which I don't think any of those almost crying scenes, those uh, moments of quiet contemplation could have been pulled off by Keanu. Like it would have been more memeable. There would have been yeah a lot more to laugh at in this show. If this is true. Shared by In Snyder. Okay, Keanu Reeves was reportedly in consideration for the role of Master Soul, uh, but it ultimately went to Zhang Zhe. Uh, while Reeves uh, didn't get the chance to star alongside his co-star from The Matrix in the particular Star Wars series, Jeff Snyder goes on to add that Star Wars is reportedly still interested in casting the actor in another project. Don't do it. Don't do it. But yeah, uh, Reeves uh, still has a chance to make a franchise debut, especially especially for a famous fan cast of Knights of the Old Republic's Darth Revan because yeah just because now Lucasfilm as it sits is basically pilfered the prequels for all their worth or for what they're worth Let's take a look at how they treated them in the Obi-Wan show the OT is, has been rung dry for the better part of a decade thanks to the sequel trilogy what are they going to do after the sequel trilogy oh right there's a Ray movie that's coming out yay they have ruined everything that they've touched so yeah the only thing that they have left well they have two directions that they could go one that they're not is just going a thousand years into the future telling a different story within the confines of the star wars world without any references to the skywalkers to the empire to the first order to the final order none of that crap just telling a totally new story they won't do that because that's not what uh, disney lucasfilm disney star wars is about it's all about key jangles and meta references so of course what are they going to do all oh, right go back to the old republic pilfer it for all it's worth decanonize selectly decanonize specific storylines and characters and bastardize them the same way that they did with Yoda and Darth Plagueis in the Acolyte. Don't think that the Old Republic is safe. Don't think that Darth Revan from Knights of the Old Republic is safe. No way. Way. So with all that said, thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.